Okay guys, what's going on? Now, I thought I'd do a quick video here to show you what I've got going on. It's like a little temporary test bench thing I've got set up here. Um, you've got a couple of PA amplifiers, you'll have seen the crown from my old videos. Um, this is a beautiful lateral MOSFET Australian monitor amplifier, uh, which I haven't actually run yet. I bought it as broken for a very cheap price, got it repaired by my main guy over here in the UK. Uh, got all the, la the new MOSFETs uh, biased and he managed to find some of the original K MOSFETs in there. Um, so it's going to sound happy. Absolutely beautiful, very close to a tube amplifier sound, but with a lot more power. Uh, but I haven't run it yet, so I'll do that eventually. Um, now, this is a new purchase for myself. This is a proper oscilloscope. It's by HP. It's 150 megahertz, four channel, storage function, all this business. Um, it's more than you need really for audio testing, uh, but I thought this is a beautiful piece of kit and uh, I just wanted to have it. So um, this is going to be a new toy for me. It's going to be very useful for my audio experiments and could lead to me doing amplifier repair at some point in the future. So um, now the purpose of this video is I did, if you're subscribed to my channel, I did a video uh, years ago uh, which was titled something like how to test your amplifier for true power. Uh, I just used a, a really cheap multimeter, measured the voltage output with a, a speaker hooked up um, and then did some basic maths and worked out the uh, power from the impedance and the voltage. Now obviously this is uh, very inaccurate, um, I know now, um, because obviously the speaker's impedance varies greatly with um, the volume you're playing at, the frequency you're playing at, all sorts of stuff like that. So really I wasn't getting a true output of the amplifier's power there. So this is going to be a video of how to actually do it uh, and how to actually read true output from an amplifier to clipping. Um, now, what this is here, you will have seen this before if you watch my channel, this is the SPL Lab Next LCD and this is what's going to be telling me the wattage output from the amplifier. Um, along as, um, as well as sort of measuring dB and RTA functions, it has a power sensor here which uh, measures the current from your amplifier and the voltage and with those two it on the it, in the processor it calculates an on-screen readout of the wattage and the impedance of the load that it's driving. So very, very useful because you can see box riders on this when you're running it on your car audio system and then you can sort of see the differences between boxes and how they rise differently uh, and you can sort of, if it's safe, you can then load the amplifier down to 0.5 or maybe 0.25 uh, and play a frequency and check that actually it's not seeing below 1 ohm. That's a useful function for that. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be clamping the Crown Macrotec 2400. Uh, so this is a beautiful old amplifier, very sought after, very respected, still used in industry standard today. Um, and I'm going to be running this at 4 ohm bridge mono, not parallel mono, just for safety, I'm not too keen on the parallel mono side of things. Um, and we've got some uh, dummy loads here. So we've got four 4 ohm 1000 watt dummy loads. They're just the very basic cheap ones from China. Um, but they're very accurate, their impedance, I've uh, measured them all on the, um, on the true multimeter and they are exactly 4 ohms. So what I've uh, done is I've wired them in parallel series or series parallel. So you've got two in parallel, two in parallel and then the pairs series together to bring it all to a final load of 4 ohms for the amplifier. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch the amplifier on. This has got a frequency generator built in that I've scoped clean. Uh, this is the pre-amplifier, this mixer here, which I've scoped clean. Uh, and we're going to play 50 hertz. And I'm going to turn the peak hold function of uh, this on so we can see the peak wattage uh, and the impedance at which it is doing that power. And we're going to turn the crown up until we see clipping on the screen. So let's hit the on button of the amplifier. Wait for the relays to click in to power drive, here we go. Okay, so now on the screen here, there's always a tiny little bit of signal. So what we're gonna do is on the um, on the SPL Lab next LCD here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the function button, which calibrates it to zero watts, um, just gets rid of any background sort of EMF that might be coming through from the loads or from the amplifier or whatever. So we are calibrated at zero watts here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the peak hold back on. And we've got 50 hertz sine wave playing in the background. So now if I just very gently increase the volume there, you can see already we've got the wave on the screen of the output. Uh, here on the screen here, we're showing uh, 87 watts uh, there currently. So what I'm going to do is I am going to increase the volume until we start to see some clipping on the screen here. There we go. 
Got a little bit of clipping on there. Okay, so if we have a look now at the screen here, hopefully I can zoom in and you can see that well enough. So on the screen here, just in case you can't see that, uh, we've got here 105 volts uh, and we've got 2,900 watts and that was at 27 amps absolutely fantastic um, that is way way over the um, specification rated for the amplifier uh, and bearing in mind this this is running off of a, a house residential ring main um, I possibly may have got some voltage drop across the ring main um, you know this is up this is way upstairs at the top of the house we've got all sorts of fridge freezers all everything running off the ring main so um, it's not a dedicated audio uh, circuit so to get that amount of power is, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, on the screen there you will have seen that it did go into a little bit of clipping um, and that was obviously um, this is a result of like, you know me clicking it up and then seeing where the clipping started but uh, where, the, where the clip happened it wasn't uh, astronomically bad. Um, you know to get that amount of power there on a quick burst is, is, is brilliant. Um, I'm going to do that again uh, this time I'm going to control the gain a little bit better and see if we can get it see how much power we can get out of it just before the clipping point um, so, that we do it, so we don't go into clipping there we go so that was literally just before clipping there turn it down so we got 2646 watts on there um, so that is sort of playing completely clean without any THD uh, this is fantastic that was at 100 volts and 26 amps this is incredibly impressive. This amplifier is rated for 2000 watts uh, at 4 ohms. Now we're playing a 50 hertz sine wave. Let me see if it's any different playing a different frequency. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it to the frequency generator here. Uh, let's play something a little bit lower. Let's play 33 hertz. Uh, I love 33 hertz. Tends to be the peak frequency of many bass vehicles uh, over here in the UK. Uh, in the proper droppers category, so let's go and turn peak hold off and reset that. Okay, so now we've got uh, 33 hertz up on there. Let's turn this up, get a little bit of uh, frequency going. Okay, so let's see how it, it copes with the 33 hertz. That was the clipping there. Uh, and we've got 2,249 watts there uh, and that was uh, 24 amps again, 92 volts um, interesting little uh, bit of clip there on the oscilloscope it's almost like it clipped and then it kind of rectified itself now that could be the ODEP here working on the amplifier now bearing in mind I'm driving this amplifier at real loads to its clipping point it's not really that warm um, you know, I'd expect this to be getting pretty hot, and actually the dummy loads aren't actually, you know, they're not hot either, they're just marginally uh, higher temperature than, than, than the ambient temperature in the room. Um, so this is you know, quite an impressive, this is the first sort of main tests I've done at large power with these kind of dummy, dummy loads and all sorts, so yeah, impressive stuff, I'm actually quite happy with how this is going. Um, we're seeing some really, really big power here, um, and you know, nothing's really uh, seems to be taking too much strain. So this is going to be an incredibly good um, sort of little setup here for testing car amplifiers and um, seeing their actual output compared to what the manufacturer rates them for. The only issue which I've got at the moment is that my power supply setup, although it is very very uh, current, hung it, it can draw a lot of current, and I've got uh, two 175 amplifier amp. Uh, power supplies down there, the Dell server PSUs, um, so I've got a combined power of 350 amps. The only problem is it only outputs it at 12.6 volts. Um, now this is a problem when you're clamping bench testing car amplifiers because the the windings of the um, transformers in the car amplifiers uh, are designed really to sort of operate between the 12 and 14 volts so um, when, a, a small difference between 12 volts and 14.5 volts for a car amplifier is actually very important and you'll get considerably more power at 14 volts uh, than you will at 12 volts on an amplifier so it'll be unfair for me to test them at 12.6 really um, because we'll no doubt see far less than the, than the uh, manufacturer's ratings uh, at 14.4 so I am actually 
at the moment uh, in, in speaking with my uh, tech guy and he's going to be uh, putting me together a switching power supply hopefully to give me uh, somewhere around about um, 300 amps at 14.5 volts. That's about the maximum that I can draw from my ring main here. Um, in order to bench more powerful amplifiers that will draw more than 300 amps, um, I'll be having a little bank of uh, batteries, 14 volt excess power batteries, um, so that they can actually provide the, the true uh, required current for the amplifiers there without getting any voltage drop uh, below the 14 volts if I've got the power supply hooked up as well. It should act like a very powerful alternator. Um, so that would be very interesting and exciting to see in future videos. But So I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, demonstration here. I'll be doing way more videos with these as time goes on. Um, all sorts of fun experiments with audio. Uh, we can actually see the sound wave on the screen now, um, which will be very interesting to play with. Um, and this is actually now going to be a video response if you like to my old video from years ago how to bench amplifier for true power that's not how you do it this is how you do it take it easy guys i'll see you soon